Hi, this is Chris. Today I'm going to um, make something with manila file folders and window envelopes. Yesterday I was surfing around the YouTube crafters and I came across um, a video by Maxine at Tink and I and she made what she called a digikit sorter or holder or keeper and so um, that just gave me the idea to make something similar um, for keeping ephemera or um, fussy cuts, things like that, using the win window envelopes. I've been collecting them for a while. I thought that what I would do is make a stack the deck kind of binding. In other words, the inside page would be folded like this. The next page will be folded on one of these creases on the file folder and the next one will be folded on the second crease and the third crease. So I'm going to go ahead and fold this one. Sometimes it's hard to, even though they're scored, hard to get them to go where you want them to. So that one now has a quarter inch spine on it. And then the next one I will do on the second fold. So that one now has a half inch spine in the middle. And this one it's folded a little bit differently. So I'm going to fold that on the second one. It'll give me plenty of room. These folders I bought at a um, sort of a rummage sale in an industrial park many years ago and a lot of them have clients names and things on them but I've used most of them up already so these will stack so what I have to do is when I cut these I have to take this into consideration when I cut this way and this way they'll all be the same height but they'll be slightly different width measuring from the fold out so I think I'll make them five by eight. So here are my pages and my scraps. So this one will go in the middle. This will be the next one. And then this one and finally this one so you can see that it leaves plenty of room to stuff the pockets so the first one I'm going to measure it where the spine comes right there right there doesn't have to be perfect So 
So that will just glue right on there. I'll just use art glitter glue. You could use double stick tape, red tape or uh, other glues, whatever works. Then the next one This is where our fold is. And then this is where we'll put the third page. So it's about there and about there. And mark that. Now this one doesn't have a spine to glue down, so I'm going to staple this one. I have a long arm stapler, but you could, um, you could sew this on your sewing machine. Just use a long stitch so it doesn't perforate it too closely. You could sew it by hand with a pamphlet stitch. So there's all different ways that you could stick these together. So I'm going to clip this together. And then I'll take my long arm stapler I can actually set the distance here so I'm going to set it right there it's about and what I did was On the stapler itself, I put a little mark with a Sharpie pen right where the staple will be coming out so that it makes it easier to line it up. So I want to, put a, I want to be sure so by setting this tab here it helps to keep the staple straight. So we hope it is straight. It looks pretty straight. And I'll put one here. And I'll put one here. And that's the start of our book. Once I've put in staples, I like to take a little anvil like this and tap those staples flat. Makes a nice finish for the book. So next, I'll go through my envelopes. And I'm going to have to trim them pretty close to the windows to fit in the five inches. But I'll go through and I'll pick out about, let's see, we have, all together we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 pages that we can put envelopes on. So I'll go through and fast forward this as I choose some envelopes and trim them down. I've trimmed up several of the envelopes and I left the bottom um, of the envelope intact and trimmed it to about a little more than a quarter of an inch so I can glue this down and it'll make this edge stronger when you're um, pushing things in and out. So I just cut several different sizes and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to cover these pages with some scrapbooking papers. I have these papers that I think I'll use. It's called French Prep by Colorbach. And I like the neutrals of it. And it's not too thick. It's fairly thin paper. So I'm going to uh, pick out some of these papers and then I'll trim them to size and glue them on. I've cut my papers to fit the pages and I'm, I made them just a little bit smaller so a little bit of edge of the manila folder shows and these are the ones that I cut so I will glue them down and then show you how it looks after that. I've glued paper to each of my pages And I wrapped the outside in paper. And so now I can get ready to work on my envelope pockets. And I will uh, glue up some different sizes and then we'll start seeing what, which ones I will need to store what I want to store. So I have a couple of envelopes of magazine clippings that I purchased on Etsy. A lot of these would have to be fussy cut, but I thought I would go through, see if I could find some that might have already been, might already be small. So I could start with something like this and then a smaller one would fit up here at the top. So I think I'll start with that.
I like to put things in my pockets when I glue them down to be sure they're not so tight that it's hard to fit things in there. So now I have these items. This can go in here. These ladies can go in here, although they're not the same subject and I would like to keep them as subjects, but I'm going to go ahead and glue in my envelopes and then we'll come back. Okay, I finished gluing in the envelope pockets and stuffing them with my magazine clippings. So these clippings are from a bundle I bought from Diane Hubert at Pretty Pink Cottage and they date from 1943 to 1970. And some of them can be kind of fragile, so I wanted to put them in a keeper like this. And I covered up some places that had some typewritten things, a business name or an address or a postal mark. And I just covered up with some, uh, I'll show you. With this, it's adhesive cardstock. It's uh, by the Paper Studio, so that's Hobby Lobby, and it's called Tattered and Worn. So the four and a half by six and a half inch in in inches, and there's all different colors. And I thought they kind of went with the papers that I had used. On some pages, I just put in one pocket. If I want to, I can add another pocket. And uh, on other pages, I put a large pocket and a small pocket. And uh, so this one, a large and a small pocket. Here's one where I can add another pocket if I want. Here's a pocket, it's a different color, so it's not as easy to see as the white ones. And there's one pocket on each of these pages. And two pockets here and two pockets here, two here and two here, and one here. And then this one at the back, I just cut the envelope and left the back attached. So it's folded here and glued there, the original envelope, and made a double pocket out of it for the items that were just a little bit too wide to fit into these pockets. There's the back. So I'm going to put a label on here and I'm go going to put one on the spine that says uh, magazine clippings or vintage magazine clippings. I think I'll do that. And you could make this, something like this any size you need if you have um, tall ephemera that you want to keep safe, you can make a taller one. So I'm going to make a label and I made these labels, they're available in my Etsy shop as a digi kit. there's two pages and these labels all have uh, scans from family ephemera, from my grandmother's letters and passports and things from my parents and my and other relatives that wrote and there's some blank labels down here so I'm going to choose one of these long ones and then one of these and I'm going to put um, vintage magazine ephemera on there
Okay, I think I finished my little ephemera keeper. So I labeled it Vintage Magazine Adverts. I labeled it on the side too, but it got a little bit crooked. So I want to thank Maxine at Tink and I Treasures for sharing her idea. And um, I think a lot of people will get some use out of that. So have a great day crafting, and thanks for stopping by. Bye-bye.